Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Ghost Thief Deadly Shadows. Today, that's my practice run, we are going to tackle the house of Widow Moira, so let's get started. Because I am sitting in the middle of a patrol route, I'm going to hit the right click, the right mouse button to launch into the briefing right away. The lead from the abysmal gale has brought me here, to the captain's seaside mansion. Well, former captain. Omoira and most of his crew didn't survive their final voyage, but luckily for me, the ship's manifest did. It talked about a golden slab, which sounds like the compendium of reproach the keepers have been looking for. The log said Captain Moira brought it home for safekeeping. I doubt he knew what he had, probably just wanted it for the gold. My stolen rowboat got me here in one piece, now I just have to find and steal the compendium. There's no way to know how many of the captain's loyal men are guarding the place, but the household will probably be in an uproar over the captain's death. With luck, no one will notice me sneaking around. The widow Moira might know where her late husband kept his treasures. Maybe I'll start by paying her a little visit. So there's that. As always, we will play the mission on Expert. If we look at our objectives, we need to find a way into the Overlook Mansion, find and steal the Golden Slab, known as the Compendium of Reproach, leave the Overlook Manse grounds. We have a note, the Widow Moira may know where her husband kept the Compendium of Reproach. At the end of Day 3, going into this mission, here's our gear. Blackjack, Dagger, 25 Water Arrows, 30 Broadhead Arrows, 5 Noisemaker Arrows, 5 Gas Arrows, 20 Moss Arrows, 13 Fire Arrows, 11,500 gold, 4 Holy Waters, 3 Oil Flasks, 10 Health Potions, 2 Explosive Mines, 4 Gas Bombs, 19 Flash Bombs, and we've got all sorts of new upgrades. Our Mechanical Eye, the Keeper Door Glyph, our Lock Picks, the Climbing Gloves, the <clears throat> Rust Might Destroying Broadhead Arrows, and the Cornerstone Mossing Moss Arrows. Uh, we're not carrying any loot. As far as quest items go, for whatever reason, we still have Lord Julian's Velvet Bag. Apart from that, we're just toting the Pagan Sapling, the Climbing Gloves, and a bunch of keys. And we do have a map of the Overlook Mansion. The X, as always, is where we start. We'll start in this secret boathouse, and we'll move up into the mansion. The map doesn't really show... Uh, well, it's hard for me to decipher exactly what it shows, but Overlook, uh, it, in terms of Overlook grounds versus Overlook proper. Anyway, here's our map of the mansion. In the southwest corner is the library, the southeast corner is the study. I can't quite tell what this is pointing towards. Maybe the rotunda is both. Yeah, that makes sense. That both these arrows point to the rotunda. And then in the center of the north side, we have the master bedroom. Anyway, this mission only has one really tricky ghosting spot, but it's quite possible to perfect thief it. It's impossible to supreme ghost it, but we only have to take one bust, and similarly impossible to perfect supreme ghost it, but that only entails two extra busts. Anyway, let's get started. There's nothing to worry about down here, but that's not true for long once we get to the elevator. We have to be careful because the next tunnel has a patroller in it who can see the elevator at his end point. We'll be taking the elevator down later, so there's no need to return it just now. So as usual, you can hear him pause and then start moving again when he heads back the other direction. So that's when you want to shadow him and get up here. 
I like to wall flatten right here and then slip in behind him to continue up the tunnel. And we'll get our first conversation it's right your here. Turn already. I know, I know. Let me just think. I'm waiting. Don't rush me. I'm about to go. Listen, it's not that hard. Look, you're showing pelicans and mackerels, right? Just play them in order, and you'll have at least two. Oh, Burricks. What? What's wrong? You just won. I just won for you. Ha ha! Pay up, Mortimer! What did I win? So when that's over, Mortimer will head upstairs. I just wait for him to make it all the way up. He ends up patrolling around the front yard and essentially being a non-factor. So the first thing we want to do is get the two gold coins off their table. 75 each, they bring my totals to 1% and 3%. There's a flash bomb in the chest behind Benny. Which we will, of course, want to grab, and since I haven't done it yet, I'll do a real save inside the mission. And... Keep going. Now the trick to getting past Benny without any alerts is speed. You want to creep up as far as you can while you're still in the shadows. You can get behind this pillar without any alerts. Then you want to stand up and just floor it to the wall. <gasps> Can't have imagined that! Let's try that again. I think I know the problem. There's another small detail I forgot. When you get here, you actually want to... Oh. Messed up at a different phase that time. You want to move up closer to the pillars because... Well, for two reasons. It gets you... <coughs> it gets you just a little farther away from the light which is always helpful, and it also affords you more hard cover. Let's try this now. What? Dang What's it. all this rumpus? I do love Benny's use of the word rumpus. It's great. It never, it never ceases to amaze me where I find differing levels of difficulty in my practice run versus my real attempt. I had no trouble. I got this on my second try on my practice run. What? Now I just can't seem to get it. But it is eminently doable. That's the part that matters. Let's try this again. There we go. That's what you want. Once you make it there, you can use the pillar as hard cover. Just creep up the stairs. No alerts at all from our good friend Betty. There are three broadhead arrows on the table once you make it upstairs. They clip oddly, but I've always been able to grab them even if, like that time, I couldn't see them. 
Now here, it bears mentioning that you have three possible ways into the mansion. Two of them require the climbing gloves, and they work well enough. I'm just going to take the front door. It's simple enough, nothing wrong with it, and if you elected not to buy the climbing gloves, the front door is your only option. Of course, I'm still going to end up using the gloves to get around the stationary guard in front of the front door. Let's move over the porch, and then back up, reattach to the wall. <clears throat> now, I might get nailed here, I just need to check his facing. Okay, good. Once you get up to the door, you're safe from anybody, even though there are three guys out there. Of course, lockpicking is always silent. This is just like the landlords. Left, down, left, up, down. Now, he will hear you close the door behind you, but I'm okay with that. Although, now that I think of it, I don't remember an alert there. Let me just try opening the door on the right instead. That little bit of extra distance might save us from that green alert. does. Perfect. So we're inside now. That completed the objective to find a way into the Overlook Mansion. I'm gonna do a real save here. I'm gonna clear the library first, which means I have to get up to that little landing and head south. There's a note to read in this front hall, though. Let's not miss that. Receipt for cargo ship Abysmal Gale, Captain Moira for his regular due 40 parts per hull to bring up to his house the Overlook Mansion. One flask whale oil, 100 haddocks on salt, one gold slab with a strange bit of writ on it that could now be broken parts, so the Captain M agrees to take less split on the other hull. Four woven baskets, three bottles good brandy, duly signed and approved by Emmius Doolittle, Docker's assistant. A fight! Oh, we got any trigger in here! Who saw me? <clears throat> I have no idea who saw me. In my practice run, there were only two guards messing around in here. And... Both of them had their backs to me. There's some new third guy over to my left, seems like. Aha! <clears throat> <clears throat> uh -huh. uh -huh. There he is. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to retreat and scout a little and see what his deal is. He was not here on my practice run. How odd. Let's try the next run. If he's just camped over there, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, made it that time easy enough, so... Zip on into here. Oh, 
Oh, and the library is empty. How weird. Anyway, behind this sitting guard, there's a portrait worth 200. Brings my total to 8%. Oof. I don't think that was a green alert. No, it was just a alarmingly timed regular noise. Okay, so we've somehow added a third guard to the front hall and subtracted one from the library. Okay. In here, there's just a lucky coin worth 25, still 8%, but it is the first piece of special loot. That's it for over here. Feeling a good bit hungry. Need food to keep my strength up. They should know that. Now let me scope out what's happening out here. The next thing I need to do is just get across this hall. Which isn't very hard to do, especially if you take advantage of this halfway point. This will be my eventual way into Overlook proper, but not right now. I made it over here. I find this door standing open. It was closed last time, and opening and shutting it could get a little complicated, so I'm glad of that development. I do wonder where that extra guard has gone, though. Before you head it through into that room, make sure you get this painting off the wall. It's worth 150, brings my total to 12%. Then, you can basically just shadow this servant into here. Leaving the door open will require me to time the patroller as well, but two silver candlesticks on the fireplace, 50 each, 13%, 14%, diamond goblet on the couch, 150, total 18%, and then a gold urn. Worth 175, total 22%. Now that's it, but she will second or er, yellow alert over the gold urn. So I'm gonna get over to these shadows at the base of the stairs and, and wait that alert out. Nothing better to do than frighten the maid. I don't know why I bother. I mean, nothing's there. All right. Now that she's settled, the ground floor in Overlook Grounds is already clear, and we're all set to move upstairs. Still worried about that extra guard I saw. Need to know where he's gone. Him I am aware of. Just kind of need to wait for him to... He'll pause at the top of the stairs and then turn back around. Just need to move into the room behind him. There are two things we want in this room. The first... If you just hold right is inside this locked chest. It's right, left, up, down. Inside is a ruby necklace worth 75. Brings my total to 24%. Then if you head over behind the stairs, you can also find another painting worth 150. Brings my total to 27%. Now we want to follow him in, into the hall. 
and assuming his behavior hasn't changed, I'm actually just going to want to follow him and use his own turns to get around him, because... Wouldn't mind a bit of ale right now, actually. Tell the truth. But no, that's against the rules. <laughs> so opening and closing that door has always green alerted him. So once we're past him, head into this bedroom where there's a sleeper. I still haven't seen that extra guard. That really worries me. Oh yeah, there is one other thing to do. There's nothing to pick up in here, but uh, there is a note to read. Curtis's journal, page 38. I'd give my notice if it weren't for the widow. They'll rob her blind if I'm not around to stop it. As it is, I can't be everywhere at once, but heaven help the ones I catch. Have to face it, she's not in her right mind. This morning, she handed me some old coin as a tip. It was the captain's lucky coin and 200 years old if it was a day. She must have got into his old things, the poor dear. But if I give it back, she'll just give it to Standish. I'll bring it to the library and see if I can research what it's worth. So with that done, there's nothing else in that room. As an aside, I love the music in this mission, don't you? A ruby ring and pearls for my ears. Now next to her, there's a diamond ring on the table, worth 100, brings my total to 30%. On the fire, above the fireplace is another diamond goblet, worth 150, brings my total to 33%. Over in the northeast corner, two copper bowls, 100 each, bring my total to 36% and 38%. And then, if you move on to the south, inside this room, in the chest, right, left, up, down, can find a ruby necklace worth 75, total 40%, and another note to read. Tuesday, I thought he'd never leave. I ain't never cursed the weather so much. Almost done checking the upper floors, no sign of the captain's secret. Saturday, got the news about the abysmal gale today. Good riddance is what I say. The captain ain't never did me no favors, else why am I still working like a dog? I guess Ginny will have to break the news to Mrs. Moira, but if she chickens out, I'll do it, and gladly. Wednesday, with so many house guests about, I can't look for no secret room or anything. I gotta go on pretending to be lapdog standish. Somewhere the captain's ghost is laughing at me. If there ain't no treasure, I'll make off with that fine silver mirror in the widow's bathroom. She's in no state to miss it. Next, we want to open this trap door. You could just drop down, because no one's around to hear you, but... Down here, floating in the air in a very strange fashion, you find a key. This takes you out to the roof of the porch. It's one of the alternate ways into the mansion. And over inside this chest, there's a gold nugget worth 150, brings my total to 44%. Now this next bit can be tricky. See, in my practice run, he was facing away from the door when I opened it, but I didn't know if he ever actually turned to face it or not. You just, you have a pivoting drunk guard out here. We may have to head out and tackle the other wing from the balcony. We'll see. Hello? Who left this open? Well, if he's looking... He yellow alert, so it may be just as well to head to the balcony and get the... There are two pieces of loot left to get, so I tell you what. I was able to come through this door in my practice run, but I don't know if he's ever going to pivot or not. He doesn't hear it, you might have noticed. 
There he goes. Huh? Whoever you are, you you better have something to drink. <laughs> we ought to be able to do this. If he doesn't greet alert when I open it, he certainly shouldn't yellow when I close it. <laughs> Sloppy. This ought to be shot now. All right, we'll just go to the balcony. That should be easier, I think. Spare us having to deal with this guy, so... Just head out here. There we go. Head down, same way as I did before. Guess I should have just gotten these two things at the beginning. Oh well. Be careful out here, because there are still three patrollers. But, you want to head up here. This will be the side of, have the side effect, of course, of showing you the third way into the mansion. I've just had a peek at her. She's up on the roof raving, and she didn't know me from a field mouse. Well, we found the extra guard. He's stuck in here behind these two would-be thieves. I didn't mean... Uh, I know, darling. The question is more probably, where did the late Captain Moira put it? He wouldn't leave the myriad telescope just lying around. Bryce, we're doing the right thing, aren't we? I mean, its beauty is wasted on the Widow Moira. She doesn't appreciate the finer things. Well, it's right for us, sweetness, but as an officer of the City Watch, I must confess it's probably not doing right by the Widow. Scoundrel of the City Watch, you mean? <laughs> Looks like the Widow now. Moira has more than just me to worry about tonight. So now the woman will leave, the man will start patrolling around the room, and maybe the guard can escape. Did I see? Uh, perhaps not. Of course, if the guard doesn't... Well, it's a good thing I came from the balcony, because the guard standing there facing the door would make it impossible to come from the other way, even if I could get around the drunkard. As it stands, I'm still going to have some trouble, but... I was hoping a quick load might start him moving. Not really the th There it is again. Hmm. Well, now he's not going to move either, so... I'm going to have to move in directly on that purse, you can see. Use that pillar as hard cover.
That's worth 50, brings my total to 45%. Something moving? Mm. Oh, oh, damn it. Wait! Who are you? Well, I'm gonna have to get the purse this way, but... No way I can get to the door with the guard there. So how am I gonna get to that diamond ring? I'm gonna have to manage to get around Benny. I'll grab the purse. 50 loot brings my total to 45%. Now I'm going to have to manage to get past the pivoting drunk to get the last piece of loot in this zone. <laughs> the library was easy enough to sneak through when there was a guard. This is not an even trade. This is much worse than having a library guard and having the extra guard. If it wasn't obvious, this is where the woman from the conversation ends up. She meanders around this room. What is it? Not again. Did she see me? <gasps> Who's there? Uh. Well, I'm just gonna have to... I think Benny keeps noticing the door open. So I'm just going to have to move quickly past him. Huh? Hello. Ah! Damn. I forgot that it opened on the left. No big deal, no big deal. As long as I can still hide from him. A yellow alert from the open door won't bust my ghost. But I'd certainly still rather it didn't happen if I could help it. Hello? Ah! Somebody causing trouble. Good grief. I keep calling him Benny just because he's a drunk guard, but it isn't even the same voice. Well, this is annoying. I feel like there's a glitch happening here. Like that extra guard is supposed to patrol so I can come after this ring from the balcony, but... I do know one way to deal with this. Well, it's a possibility anyway. I've seen guards treat the state of things when the game loads as the normal state, so I may be able to exploit the engine, busting Supreme, of course. I'm sure that shouldn't be opened. Sloppy. This ought to be shut now. Well, I'll take their yellow alert as long as I can stay hidden. Uh. That's it then. All, all quiet. Shh. What is he doing?
I guess he tried to move through the wall to get back to his post and couldn't do it. Well, normally when he's standing here, you saw he pivots back and forth. It's pretty easy to slip out behind him and get over to this room while his back is turned if he doesn't do this weird movement for you. Anyway, that we did all that for this diamond ring worth 100 brings my total to 47%. Oh, nice to see you again. <sighs> well, I have to tell you folks, I have not run into that before. Usually I have no trouble just moving through that door and sneaking around him while his back is turned. This nonsense some place to be. This nonsense with him being stuck in the room is especially weird to me. Anyway, let's use the couch as hardcover. Something in the shadow. Let's avoid that green alert if we can, and I'm pretty sure we can. Don't you have some place to be? From the couch, she should head back over to the bookcase. Alright, we should be able to get back into this bedroom now. All right, the rest is simple. Sorry about that detail or detour, folks. Anyway, that yellow alert didn't bust my ghost because it wasn't pegged to being seen or heard. I'll say it was an extra supreme bust, though. Noticing a door being left open. So. That's one extra supreme bust I had to take for Perfect Thief. Whatevs. I trust all is well, your, uh, fine ship. I think he's talking to the woman asleep in the next room. Oh is, boy! Which is strange to be sure, given that she's on the other side of a wall and she's asleep. But, whatever, you do what you want, Benny. As you can see, you can't rely purely on their patrol routes like you could in the first two games, because you saw him look back down the hall just then. So I'm going to get here. Wall flattened right here, and he should pass me by no trouble, and I can head back downstairs. Well, knowing that the extra guard is safely tucked away up in that balcony room gives me a lot of peace of mind as I come back. You think they could have a man servant do that sort of work? We need to sneak back past the servant, which should be quite a bit easier than usual with the door standing open. Don't know why the other guard didn't close it, but he didn't. That was all well-timed. Let's slip out of here. Evening. 
So you can see he's changed the directions, but that's not a big problem for me. Just get in behind all of them and head into Overlook proper. Now there are, there's one hard bid in Overlook, well two, two hard things to do in Overlook proper. What are you up to? I was going to bring some wine to Widow Mora up on the roof. I thought I left clear instructions so that Widow should get no wine. She's in a terrible state. She wouldn't know the difference between you and a murderer serving up a glass of poison. But wine is the last thing she needs. What if she swoons and falls to her death? Do you want that on your conscience? But when I set down her dessert tray, she saw me and made me swear I'd bring her a glass. Oh, did she? Then go to Cook this instant and tell him to hide the bottles, lest some other half-wit servant gets the idea to disobey my words. Yes, Mistress Mastiff. Well, be off with you then. Yes, Mistress Mastiff. <laughs> So she'll run off. The first thing I want to do is grab the Nereid telescope that the others were looking for off of this table. It's worth 400, brings my total to 57%, and is the second piece of special loot. She'll yellow alert when she sees it missing. So I'll wait here for that to settle as I creep around the other side of the room to head out the southern doorway. get out this southern doorway. It's best to wait until the thug's back is turned as he heads north and then just move in behind him. Oh, there's the other servant. I haven't seen her run back like that. That was odd. Well, you can just break right as soon as you get through and head over to this crawl space. Move inside. Down here with the rats, you can find another gold, a gold nugget. That's 150, brings my total to 60%. Take the east exit out of the crawl space, and we will arrive in the captain's study. There's some silver coins on the desk, worth 50, bring the total to 61%, and a note to read. Thursday. Will the storm never let up? We've been kept in port for three days while the men stay on pay lest they find other work. The treasure perplexes me. What manner of gold is it that gleams so but does not dent? What does the strange symbol on it mean? Is it solid? No, not heavy enough. Hollow then. Friday. I endeavored to melt it, but the treasure shows no sign of warp or scorching. I've heard of things protected by wards and such. Could this be such an item? I have placed it in the secret room for now, but this warrants further study when I return. Monday. The weather finally broke, and tomorrow we'll set sail if the dockmaster is in the mood to take a bribe from an old marauder like me. Too bad I'll have to leave behind my fine gold telescope, the Nereid. The glass lens is chipped. If I were a superstitious man, I'd delay the trip. For now, it will stay here on display in the rotunda. So, we can go and pick open his chest. Right, left, up, down. Inside the chest, there's a health potion. And another diamond ring, worth 100, brings my total to 